So, after they got me up at the crack of dawn this morning and took me to the farm, you believe now these people want soup? Today we're going to make some cow heel soup. Don't mind my early morning star, I can still make it. We are going to start by making a stock with our cow heel soup because I have a little surprise for you later. So rather than put everything in my pressure cooker, I'm going to start with the cow heel. We're going to make the stock and then I'm going to split it. So we're going to get cow heel soup plus a surprise. Now, here we go. I already have my cow heel washed. So in this goes, yay, cow heels in. So we're making a stock. So I'm gonna be a, bit, uh, a white stock. But because of the cow heel, it's gonna be extra gelatinous. So that's really excellent. So carrots. And then, rose, both marjoram and thyme. So those are aromatics. Good, lovely. Now I'm gonna go in with my onions. Now traditionally you don't put salt in stocks per se, but because we're gonna be using the meat that we're cooking in the stock, we don't want it to become bland like it would if you were making a stock. Yeah, because this is part of our soup. So you put on your lid, you hear the pressure valve release, right? And then you lock it in. Now this little baby here, we got this at Blaze and Williams. Not only does it pressure cook, but you can also put it on the slow cook function. Press the button that says steak and meat. It comes up automatically with 30 minutes, but I actually want 45 minutes for this one. So I'm gonna press time cook and add some time to it. Take it up to 45. And now we start. So while that's in there, Let's get the rest of the soup ready. I already have my yellow split peas working away because obviously peas take a little bit longer than everything else to cook. So I put them in first with some onions and some thyme and some marjoram, some salt and some white pepper. So we can start adding the rest of the ingredients. So carrots. Pumpkin. So we get a lovely color in our soup. Then we have white edders. And those go. Yes. And some sweet potato. So we're going to put that in. And let that start to simmer. Obviously, it's not soup without dumplings. So we're going to get to those later. You don't worry at all, at all, at all. Now, the other thing that I'm going to put into my soup some good Bajan green banana, yeah? Just for the youngsters out there who might not know, tip of your knife, one, in the, mid, in the front as well, two, to the side. So you're making four incisions on your green banana. And it helps you lift away the skin very easily. So you put your, again, where can we tip your knife? Just peel it away. Easy peasy. Just like that, off it comes. So that's one, two pieces, three pieces. If you're not using it right away, you're gonna keep it in water. And also you might wanna keep dipping your hands in the water and your knife because there's a residue that you get, almost like a sticky sap when you're working with green bananas. And water, I find. Green bananas, edas, and yams, they all have this sticky residue when you're peeling them. And I find that if you put your hands in water, either in a bowl or under the sink running, then it's usually easier to control the sap. So, get them a little rinse off. And they're also gonna go in our soup. So, can't complain about that, right? Or, you're putting everything in soup that's supposed to be in there. Got green bananas, edas, sweet potato, what they call blue food or ground food. High in nutrients, low in carbohydrates. 
delicious and local. So that is that. Come home to the place you love. The sights, the sounds, the feelings. Come home to the taste you love. So bring home the flavor. Bring home the ham with farmer's choice. Bring home the flavor. Bring home the ham with farmer's choice. Now for your surprise. So I'm popping these eggs in. There won't be a minute. And we're going to be making a beef ramen. Sounds exciting? Surprise! I've got my lovely beef from BADMC. We are also going to be using this set of ingredients. So this is a naturally brewed soy sauce. So it's not commercially brewed, it's naturally brewed. It's the um, original way to do it. And that means that it does not have gluten in it because they don't add gluten to it in order to thicken it, right? So it's naturally fermented. And then we have some hoisin. And all of those are going to go into our broth and make it tasty, along with the miso. Now, these three ingredients create what you call a unami flavor, right? And this part of the soup that you put those in is called a tare, which is the flavor that informs the soup. So it's going to be very interesting. So it has quite a few moving parts, so we're going to we're gonna get it together. And I think I'm gonna take my eggs out now. I don't need them right now, I'll need them later. And I still need this water, you'll see in a bit why. I like for my ramen to use a six and a half to seven minute egg with the water boiling, which is very specific, but it gives me the exact type of egg that I want. Firm on the outside, runny in the middle, yeah? Good, and we're gonna put the beef in. Gonna hit it with a little salt and pepper. I just want to get a little color on it. I don't want it too cooked. But I find if you brown the beef just a little bit before you go into the broth, then the flavor comes through a lot better, right? So just a little bit of this and a little bit of that. And then drop the temperature down. And I'm gonna pour in a little beef stock. Right, and inside of this beef stock, you're gonna get, where is it? Aha, a little tamari, which is naturally brewed soy sauce. Pick this up at Mindful Market, along with our other Japanese ingredients today. So on one hand, I went off to Cheekside and be a DMC and got all my things for my cowheel soup. And then I went on a little trip to Mindful Market. So, you want some garlic. You want some ginger. Gonna thin the sh Yes. I just did like a, like a julienne. You're gonna get the ginger in there. Yes. I need a little sugar. Here we go, break it up. Just a teaspoon or so. I'm also putting in two star anise, and also putting in the hoisin. Sorry, the hoisin is here in front of me. Ha ha. Good stuff. So a little hoisin. There you go. All right. Back to this. Now I've made my beef fairly thin so I'm not going to overcook it. You can do bigger pieces and shred it later, but I, I kind of don't want to be sitting around forever waiting on soup. So I did um, thinner slices and cow heel. So you can put anything in your soup. So rather than just do plain beef, I actually added in some chunks of cow heel into this ramen and that is going to give it a a texture called Q, which is very, very popular in Asia. And it is a texture between bouncy and chewy that gives you a very interesting mouthfeel, like when you eat Sega bubbles or if you eat mochi or whatever. And it's very popular. I personally love that texture. It's like texture sea cat when it's done perfectly. So this one is gonna sit and simmer, but not for too long. Now we're gonna get our ramen ready. So we're using our organic ramen from Japan. 
So they, they grow organic wheat and they make a good quality ramen. So try it if you haven't tried it before. I'm gonna pop that into the basket. That goes in the garbage. All right, so I like the simmer on my beef. I'm gonna push that to the back. Just put it out of the way a little bit. Let it simmer for a bit longer. Oops, watch your handles. Turn them out of the way, so I'm gonna move that over as well. There you go. Please do not get burnt on my account. And I'm gonna set up the other part of the soup. Now, I could simmer this onion in the broth like I will the other vegetables, but I'm not going to because I like the bite of raw onion. The onions into my bowl just the way they are, and I'm not gonna simmer them, but you can if you want to. I'm gonna start building my ramen bowl from here. I'm just using the things that we got from the market when we went to Cheapside. So I'm gonna get these peppers in, and I'm gonna get a little carrot. But the story show is gonna be beef, so I don't need like a million different ingredients. We're gonna keep it simple, and we're gonna focus on the wonderful, wonderful flavors. Keep my carrot flat so I can control it. And while I'm cutting these up, I'm gonna get, oops, and that at the back needs to be. Cup of water, cup of our beef stock, Very quickly, our ramen is done. And we're gonna take it out. Ooh, look at that. And this water can turn off. And as I said, I am setting up my bowl. So I'm gonna go straight in. Straight into my bowl. Whoops. Messy, messy. I'm gonna put the ramen right next to our onions. Good, good. So, you put a little more soy in this broth. So you've got, so far, water, you've got beef. You're putting in your peppers, so you're adding the veg now. And this, again, does not simmer for very long. Your stock has already been made, the flavor is already there. You're just basically softening your vegetables when you're making this aspect of the ramen dish, right? I can't tell if ramen is soup or meal. I guess you can you can decide which one you think it is and let me know. Oops. Right. So nice julienne on all the um, vegetables. Put them in there. Perfect. And I'm gonna add some mushrooms. Mushrooms also add an unami flavor to food. I like the smell and taste and texture of them. And they, of course, pair extremely well with beef, right? So here we go. We're gonna just let that sit and simmer. Can't see what I'm doing. Surprise, surprise. Now, we're also going to add our miso. Miso paste is basically a fermented soybean paste, which is full of unami flavor and excellent. Use, it's used quite widely in Japanese cuisine and it's really excellent in ramen. So here we go. In with the miso. So all the elements of our soup are now simmering away. Now we wait, but not for very long because that's the thing about these, um, this Asian soup. It does not take as long. <laughs> well, the preparation is fairly lengthy, eh? But then after you put everything together, it doesn't take quite so long. Now I'm just gonna get the garnish ready. Just gonna clear my board. Now I want both the white and the green part of my chives for my soup. So I'm taking that off. Just gonna give it a nice diagonal slant. Tuck my fingers in. Here we go. It's very traditional topping for your ramen. So we've got 
onions, we've got ramen already. Now we can go in with the beef. There we go. Gonna put some cow heel right there. Oh, look at that. Like, look at the jelly consistency of it. Like, it's already delicious and we haven't, we haven't even had any yet. Gonna put some beef on top of that. Get some of that lovely. Gonna grab, before I pour the liquid, because I want a lovely presentation, I am going to make sure I get my vegetables put down first so I can see them. I'm not just gonna pour them in. I'm gonna place them very deliberately into the bowl so you can see the lovely colors just like that. So that's our peppers and our carrots. So you can see your mushrooms right there. Perfect. Awesome, right? And now, now I'm gonna pour. Just so I can see it. Not to the top, just so I can see. Aha. And to finish this fine dish, I'm just gonna grab a spoon and add the traditional topping. Because I did promise you an egg, did I not? So what is ramen without a soft boiled egg on top? It wouldn't be right, right? So I had it soaking in just room temperature water, push my spoon underneath and pull. So I just slide under and it's, I almost said skin, and the shell comes off. So you can feel that it's not firm in the middle and that goes right on top. And we're going with both green chives and white. So, since they woke me up so early this morning, and I am so tired that I could barely keep my eyes open, I'm gonna have this bowl of ramen while we wait for the cow heel soup to finish. And then, and only then, will we be done for this session. So see you in a minute. And it is definitely time for lunch. Yes, I am. Oh man, smells delicious and I'm so tired. It'll be awesome. At Dwellings, we believe that home means happy. That your home is a place where you do what you love with the things that you love and the people who you love. That's why our selection of housewares and fine furnishings is designed to inspire your dream home. Dwellings, we make your home happy. So, we're back to the cow heel soup. Yeah, the ramen was filling. I, I can't complain, a little thirsty. So I believe a cup of Moby is in order because I am thirsty. Yes. Pick this up in the market with all the other spices. I'm gonna need. Moby comes from the bark of a tree called the Colabrina elliptica and it grows all over the Caribbean. It is said to be good for your blood pressure, for your blood sugar, for your arthritis. For diarrhea. Mm. It's nice and bitter. Just a little brown sugar to make it sweet. All the different spices. Yeah, that's that's refreshing. Mm. I'ma just keep a hold of that while I finish up this cold heel soup. Cause cold, cold heel soup is labor, yeah. So, all right, soup is looking good. We need the cold heel now, right? So we're gonna go into the pressure cooker. Now the pressure cooker stopped a few minutes ago, mm, 10, 15 minutes, and we allowed it to cool down so that the pressure inside the pressure cooker and the pressure outside the pressure cooker would ret 
return to equilibrium, right? So before we try to open, we have to wait. Everybody knows. Okay, so now that this is done, ah. There's our beef stock, and there's our coheal, all nice and done. Right. So, now I'm going to strain this, and we're gonna finish our soup. So, now that we have our coheal and the stock out of the pressure cooker, we're gonna finish off our soup. So, there you go, everything has been boiling nicely, so here we go with our stock. And remember, we made extra stock so that we can keep it and do things like make our ramen bowl occasionally. Now I'm going to go in with some cow heel. Yes. Now with the ramen dish that I did earlier, I took the cow heel off the bone and just had meat, all that gelatinous goodness in the bowl. But a fun regular traditional Bajan Kohio, so everything going in, yeah? Everybody in. It's a party. All your friends are invited. Yes. Ooh, look at that. Everybody in. Mm hmm We're gonna let it thicken back up because we just added some liquid, but the liquid we added is gelatinous because it has been in the pressure cooker creating this lovely stock so it won't take very long for everything to thicken back and hold back together. And now, dumplings. So I have my flour, my sugar, my baking powder. Now I'm gonna go in with a little nutmeg for flavor. Pinch of that and a pinch of salt and some water. So you always make your little well in the middle to pour the water. Mix everything in. Evenly distribute your flavors. Make a little hole in the middle. Water. Yes. You know, ain't nobody here helping me with the soup, but I'm sure somebody can turn up to taste it. I just got a feeling. It happens all the time. Just as you finish cook, somebody comes. Just enough water to get it to pull together and not too much mixing. There, perfect. Tuck it in, tuck it in, tuck it in, tuck it in, tuck it in. Not sticky, not dry. I'm gonna start making my cute little dumplings, dropping the top of my soup. It's just a little movement in the top of the water. Perfect. The exact same recipe that we are making these dumplings with can be replicated with gluten-free and cassava flour, yeah? So that you can have a gluten-free alternative so your soup would have no flour in it. Dumplings floating in heaven. I'ma drink some mobby and wait for this to boil up. So look at that. Dumplings floating on the top. Everything thick and nice. Look at that. Dumplings floating on the top. Nice yellow color from all of our sweet potato and carrots. No, I did not forget. One pepper in, whole. Don't cut it. Put it in and in because I don't want it to burst. It's for flavor, not for heat. And pop that in. I'm gonna give this a little taste and I'm going to adjust the salt and pepper. To finish. Mm. Mm. And just put that over, turn that off, and look for a bowl. Now normally I would just let this sit, leave it to get some flavor, but I know you want to see what's in my pot, so I'm going to take some out so you can see. Okay? 
So it's gonna take out a little bit. We're gonna leave the raspberry pepper in, but I'm just gonna take out a little bit so you can see what we have done. So two dumplings. Let's find that cow heel. Ooh, look at that. It's like a facial, it's like a warm bath all over your face. Get some carrots and everything in there. There you have it. Traditional Bayesian cow heel soup. And just as I suspected, as soon as I turn off the pot, I hear somebody coming. Stay tuned.